Aloha. Welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I'm so happy to be with you again today as we consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I'm talking about how the subconscious mind shapes anxiety and how we can rewire our responses. You know, the subconscious mind plays a huge role in the development and persistence of anxiety and anxiety disorders because it stores deeply ingrained beliefs, it stores memories, and it stores automatic responses that shape how we perceive and react to the world. So I want to go over some of the key ways that the subconscious mind influences our anxiety. First up, negative experiences. The subconscious mind holds memories of past traumas, fears, or distressing events that may have been too overwhelming to fully process at the time. Now, these unresolved experiences can trigger automatic anxiety responses later in life, even if the situation that you are in doesn't pose a real threat. For an example, someone who experienced a traumatic event as a child may unconsciously associate certain environments, sounds, or people with danger, leading to anxiety even when they are safe. I had this myself. I had a traumatic dog bite when I was very young. And for so much of my life, I'm so glad to report to you that this doesn't happen to me anymore. But I would see a particular dog, the type that bit me, and every hair on my body would stand on end. I would go into what was then not known to me as an anxious reaction, but I would have an anxious reaction and I would be afraid I would freeze. And that had nothing to do with where I was, what I was doing. That dog was on a leash with somebody else across the street, didn't even matter. But my subconscious mind brought up that very difficult trauma that I had. And it can be worked through. I want you to know this. But when we don't know what's going on, we can't work on it. Once I understood that was happening to me and that I could change it, I did. And I no longer am afraid of that particular kind of dog, even subconsciously. Next up are automatic negative thought patterns that we can get into. Now, the subconscious mind drives so many of the negative thinking patterns that are associated with anxiety, such as the catastrophizing, the overgeneralization, all or nothing thinking. These patterns become ingrained through repetition and often they occur without our conscious awareness. These shape how we interpret and react to stressful situations. Now, over time, these automatic thoughts can increase feelings of fear, worry, and helplessness. The third one are our conditioned responses. Our subconscious mind is responsible for conditioning. And this is a process where certain stimuli become linked to the anxiety. For example, if someone has a panic attack in a particular setting, a crowded space or an elevator like I did, the subconscious mind may link that location with the experience of the fear. This can lead to avoidance of similar situations, reinforcing the anxiety over time, which is what happened to me and so many of my clients. We unconsciously linked, for me, the elevator with the panic. The elevator didn't cause the panic. The crowded space 
didn't cause it. It isn't going to cause it again. It is my reaction to it, my thinking about it. What am I thinking about it? And all that I have stored in my subconscious mind about it. These are things that can be changed. Number four is fear of the unknown. Of course, this is a big one. The subconscious mind seeks for safety and predictability. And when we're faced with uncertainty or unknown outcomes, the subconscious may trigger anxious responses as a way of preparing us for danger, even if no real threat exists. This can lead to chronic worry, a heightened need for control, and you you know, we talk about that here all the time. These are very common things that arise when people are struggling with anxiety. Number five, self-protection mechanisms. Anxiety often raises up as a defense, a defense mechanism rooted in the subconscious mind. The brain's primary goal is to protect us from harm, to get us to safety. So the subconscious mind may create anxiety to avoid perceived threats, even if those threats are irrational. Now, this is really true when it comes to social anxiety, where the subconscious is protecting against perceived judgment or rejection, even in low-risk situations. I know that a lot of you are struggling with this, and I hope that you can begin to see it, that it is the perceived threat and that the brain is doing what it should do because it's trying to keep you safe. That's its job. So it's creating anxiety so that you don't go into that social situation and get annihilated. Well, that is coming from the perceived judgment of rejection, even if the situation is low risk. Again, this can all be worked with. Once you are beginning to see where you might be having your subconscious rear up. Number six is beliefs and self-perception. So what this is, is the beliefs are stored in the subconscious mind. And often these are formed in early life. And these can deeply impact our self-esteem and how we perceive ourselves in relation to others. If someone subconsciously believes that they are unworthy or incapable, this can fuel social anxiety, performance anxiety, or general anxiety. These core beliefs drive the fear of failure, of rejection, and inadequacy. I hope you are seeing that these are our brain and our subconscious mind working, and we can deal with it. We don't have to just go along with it. Number seven is the resistance to change. The subconscious mind will resist change because it prefers familiar patterns, even if those patterns are unhealthy. When trying to adopt new coping strategies or challenge anxious thinking, the subconscious may sabotage those efforts by clinging to old habits that feel safer, and this will just perpetuate the anxiety cycles. We can work with this subconscious mind. All of those things, once they are brought into the light, we can begin to see where we can make changes, how we can get healthier. So how are we going to work with the subconscious mind to manage our anxiety? First up, we're going to use mindfulness and awareness. We're going to bring unconscious patterns into our conscious awareness. Like I said, we're going to shine the light on them. And we do this through mindfulness practices. This can really help to rewire the brain's responses to the anxiety triggers. 
Also, we can use things such as cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. CBT targets the automatic negative thoughts that are driven by the subconscious, helping to shift ingrained patterns of thinking. Next would be hypnotherapy. Some people use hypnotherapy to access and reframe deeply held beliefs or memories in the subconscious mind that may be contributing to anxiety. Journaling and self-reflection. These tools help uncover hidden fears or beliefs that are stored in the subconscious, allowing people to address and reframe them. And you want to know why I talk about journaling all the time? This is one of the reasons. It can begin to help you uncover the hidden fears or beliefs that are stored in the subconscious. Now, I want to go back to mindfulness and awareness because this can really, really begin to rewire your anxiety. Mindfulness and awareness are so powerful. They are the tools for managing anxiety because they bring unconscious patterns and reactions into the light of conscious awareness. Now, this process helps to disrupt the automatic responses that are driven by the subconscious mind, allowing us to respond to the anxiety triggers with greater calm and more control. First up, we want to become aware. You know, so often anxiety responses are ingrained in us to the point that we react to triggers without even realizing it. We don't have awareness of it. As an example, you might automatically tense up when walking into a social situation or experience a racing heart when facing a deadline. These responses are governed by the subconscious mind, which seeks to protect you from perceived danger. This is why people feel like these symptoms and sensations come up out of nowhere, out of the blue. They don't come out of the blue. They come out of the subconscious. And the mindfulness part of this helps us to pause and become aware of these automatic reactions as they occur. We become mindful of them. Instead of being carried away by the anxiety, mindfulness creates space to observe what's happening in the body and the mind, our thoughts, our emotions, our sensations, without immediately reacting. And by noticing these patterns, we begin to interrupt the habitual cycle of anxiety. The second piece I want to talk about here is actually disrupting the cycle. The anxiety is often maintained by a cycle of automatic thoughts, physical sensations, and emotional reactions. For instance, you might have an anxious thought, like, I'm going to fail, which triggers a physical response, racing heart or tight chest. And in turn, that physical sensation reinforces the anxious thought creating a feedback loop. We are living in this when we are living with anxiety. Once we have awareness, the awareness helps to disrupt this cycle by allowing you to step outside of it. When you notice anxious thoughts or bodily sensations without the judgment, you weaken their power over you. The simple act of observing a racing heart or tightness in your chest without adding the layers of fear or judgment can help you reduce the intensity of the anxiety. Next is training our brain to respond in a different way. Through mindfulness practice, you are essentially training your brain to respond differently to the anxiety triggers. Instead of automatically reacting with fear or avoidance, you're learning to engage with anxiety in a non-reactive, non-judgmental way. Now, studies have shown that mindfulness can change the structure and function of the brain over time. 
Specifically, regular mindfulness practice strengthens the prefrontal cortex. That's the part that's responsible for decision-making, self-control, and emotional regulation, while also reducing the activity of the amygdala. And you know what that is? That is our fear center that activates during anxiety. Now, this rewiring helps you stay grounded in moments of stress as the brain becomes more adept at regulating emotional responses. Anxiety is often exacerbated by what Claire Weeks calls the second fear, the fear of anxiety itself. When we experience anxiety, we tend to react with fear and judgment, thinking thoughts like, this is awful, this is dreadful, or I can't handle this. This second fear creates more anxiety and can spiral into a full-blown panic attack. Mindfulness will teach us to observe the initial fear without adding the second layer. By cultivating an attitude of acceptance, we reduce the second fear response. Instead of thinking, I'm having an anxiety attack, I need this to stop right now, Mindfulness invites us to say, I'm experiencing anxiety right now, and that's okay. This subtle shift can have a profound impact on how we experience and recover from anxiety. We want to also look at reducing avoidance behaviors. A common feature of anxiety is avoidance avoiding situations, people, or experiences that trigger anxious feelings. While avoidance may offer short-term relief, it reinforces anxiety in the long run by strengthening the belief that the feared situation is dangerous. Mindfulness helps you to face anxiety triggers with more curiosity and less avoidance. Hear that again, more curiosity and less avoidance. When you practice mindfulness, you will learn to approach uncomfortable thoughts or sensations with openness rather than running from them. This not only reduces the grip anxiety has on you, but it also builds resilience in facing difficult situations head on. Now, We also want to strengthen our emotional regulation. This is key to managing anxiety and mindfulness enhances your ability to regulate emotions by paying attention to how anxiety manifests in the body and mind. You gain insights into what triggers your emotional responses and how they unfold. Over time, the mindfulness helps you to develop a pause button between the anxiety trigger and your reaction. Instead of getting swept away by panic or stress, you calmly observe your emotions, allowing them to pass without escalating. This practice strengthens emotional resilience and decreases reactivity to stress. We also want to reframe our anxious thoughts as we can. You can develop the ability to see your anxious thoughts as that, just thoughts, not facts. And in that way, we are reframing them. The subconscious mind often sends anxious thoughts to us as unquestionable truths, like I'm going to fail or something bad is going to happen. These Thoughts trigger anxiety because we believe them without examining them. And mindfulness will help you to step back from your thoughts and view them more objectively. When you notice a thought like, I can't handle this, which comes up all the time in anxiety, mindfulness will allow you to respond with curiosity and say, Is that really true? This gentle questioning helps reduce the power of the anxious thoughts and allows for more balanced thinking. 
We also want to practice acceptance because anxiety often stems from a desire to control or avoid uncomfortable emotions or uncertainty. And the mindfulness teaches us to embrace a state of acceptance where we allow our experience to unfold without resisting. Acceptance doesn't mean we want the anxiety to happen, but rather that we stop fighting against the reality that it is happening when it arises. In doing so, we stop adding resistance and tension to the anxiety, which can paradoxically reduce its intensity. Acceptance helps to rewire the brain's fear response by showing it that anxiety isn't something to be fought against, but something that can be observed, experienced, and eventually allowed to pass. Mindfulness and awareness are transformative in the context of anxiety because they shift our brain's habitual responses. By becoming aware of our unconscious patterns, disrupting automatic reactions, and fostering acceptance, mindfulness helps reduce the intensity and frequency of anxiety over time. And the more we practice mindfulness, the more we retrain the brain to respond to anxiety with calm, curiosity, and resilience. I hope today's show was helpful for you. There is so much here that we will continue to expand on it and open it up, but I hope that you at least got the idea that the subconscious mind does shape what is going on for you and that you can become aware of it through mindfulness and therefore make changes. There's so much ahead of you that's beautiful. I'm excited for you. And now for today's quote. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. And that's from Carl Jung. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Aloha.